let's see, we have any, first everybody, welcome to everybody that's here physically, and I don't know what who we have on the, oh, I don't tell you. Check, check, checking this out here. Uh, yes, online we have Mike, who's our techie yep. guy, who's helping us with the audio this week. Sherry Eckler, Susan Trainer, Elizabeth Fenn, and a caller that's unidentified. If somebody could uh, hold on one second, I'll unmute you. <laughs> that's, that's right, there's the first part, <laughs> right. Uh, is there a caller online that hasn't identified? Yes, hey, Mark, who? <laughs> Thank you. Hey, hey Ben. Hello. Mm -hmm. Hey, Mark. The other thing is uh, to let the callers participate, Susan, you'll, you'll have to be aware of okay. a good break in the discussion here. Okay. A regular, frequent basis of whatever you think is appropriate. Yeah, to okay. Way back me to make sure. I'll unmute right. everybody so they can. Right. Okay. Otherwise, I have to mute them so we hear. Um, do they have an easy way to let you know that they want to? Not in the software. Not yet. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see, do we have any changes to the agenda that we need to make? Oh, wait a second, let's go do that. Let's get that yeah, three, three things there, sure. that, Well, to add to the the seasonal plow, that's talking about the ad? Yes. Okay. Um, a, a, a grant and Hutchins needs to talk about pay, changing the paving contract. Yes, that's it. Okay. Um, public comment. These are for folks that aren't on the agenda. See if anybody's there. This, this is a good time to unmute people and see if anybody wants has something they want to add. Okay. Um, yeah. Yes, we. Yeah, very well, actually. We we changed the system, and it's like, whoa, we can't hear you. That's great, actually. Oh, right. As long as Susan asks for public comment online, then I'll unmute and everybody can participate until Susan says mute all and we'll continue the meeting here. Gotcha. Okay. So I, I think that's, is that's, that all that for public up. comment? Yep. I think that's right now. We'll move right into the... Um, Muted. So you'll hear that. Gotcha. Okay. Um, the first thing on the agenda is uh, Kim is not joining us tonight. We have uh, that's the joy of cell phones. You can you can walk out of the house and carry the conversation with you and get in the car and drive down. Um, she she has to. What we need to do? She had applied um, for a uh, for a grant um, that was made available to all town clerks. I think it was from a private foundation. Um, for things that had come up in COVID that were impacting the election process and additional things that we might need. So, uh, and Ron, I think she said she gave you a, a list of the things. She, Kim had come up and we, we talked about it as she was applying for it. Um, and, and, and again, she was, she got the grant for $5,000. So she has a whole list of things that are going to just and will help with a lot of elections thereafter too. Yeah, I can give a quick summary. The um, Things like face shields, uh, canopy for outdoor, 10 by 20 canopy, uh, hazard tape, sanitizing station, sidewalk signs, uh, control stanchions, which is a post to direct people, sneeze guards, a, a new laptop for the people that manage some of the database at the election. Uh, well, true, and part, that's, that's part of what we was getting because when we have the elections down at the school um, and she needs to print something out, she can't print it. She doesn't have access to a printer down there. That. That's yeah. right. So she that has to drive all the way back here to print something out to take it back down there. Then I think that would be a good thing to take care of. So, uh, so anyway, what we need first is a motion to accept the grant, and then we need um, a motion to authorize Kim to take care of all the paperwork and the signatures. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. We've accepted the money. Now let's give Kim the authority to spend it. <laughs> so moved. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody aye. opposed? We're good. Okay. I'll text Kim and let her know. She's, um, just so everybody knows. Her husband thank you on there too. Is doing something. Um, 
they're doing some new medication for his heart, but it's done intravenously and they want him in the hospital for 72 hours after they administer it. Well, because of and they've been the just because, that. well, because if something happens, they sort of, you know, they want you right there. And they've been trying to get in for a couple of weeks and they got a call this afternoon and said, can you come in this evening? And they said, yes. <laughs> so she's, um, they're driving into the hospital, so. And so can I go back just a minute here? I'm just looking at yep. Uh, yep. her list. You, you said they wanted a, a, a printer? That's one of the things she talked about, right. I don't right. know if she's got it on there or not. I see a new laptop on there. Yeah, that has printing capability that she can, yeah. But, but don't you have, no, the town have one? Be able to take it? Yeah, I don't see a printer on her wish list. I see a laptop, yeah. Yeah. That's what was my question. barcode scanner. Yeah, I know and, the barcode uh, scanner. It's, would it be five thousand dollars? Yeah, would it be a portable printer? This one up here is stationary, right? Yeah, this one Pretty is. Much? No, it sounds like it's the laptop. No, no, I'm I can, the laptop. I, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm still trying to bring it up. Here. Do not have the ability to answer that question. We can text her, but okay. yeah, why not? If, if something that if they're not all that expensive right now for the one or two days, it's in the ink, so to speak. Nowadays, it's in the ink. So yeah, if she so, needs a printer there. Uh, that's not my question. My question she's, is, she's asking you, about the laptop. Can you do a laptop just for the elections? Uh, the, yeah, so what she said on the laptop it is to help register people at the satellite location. So basically all the checklists are now a statewide voter checklist is online. Yeah. So when people come to register, they have to have access to the online database. Now. Okay. I understand that, but what I'm saying, she must have a town laptop now to do work at home. Uh, I don't. I don't, think, so. I don't think she does have a laptop. She, she it's a all little, desktop. Uh, she has a Microsoft Surface thing, oh. yeah. and she right. has her physical desktop. Okay. I don't think she has a laptop. Either. Right. <laughs> so, like when she goes up to Sterling View and those sorts of things to register folks and does that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah you're right. Because I was thinking, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure, but we'll, I'll double check and see. Yes, I'm, yeah, I think the Microsoft service can do so much, but I, I almost remember her say she needs the two people to do like the checklist like you normally would get. So you have two stations to do the checklist. One in, one out. Yeah, something like that. It, was, it wasn't that complicated. It was, it was like, right. this is what I need to be able to accommodate COVID was the, was the reason that normally she wouldn't need it. Okay. Um, okay, take care of him. Hyde Park Recreation Program discussion, youth sports. I'll, be, I'll, um, bet, I'll bet you're back there. Yeah. Sure. Introduce yourself, please, and we'll. I'm Matt Warren. I'm Miranda Warren. Um, we came, obviously, looking for help more than anything tonight, I think. Um, our town, I think we're the only town in our county where we didn't participate in youth soccer. Uh, because our principal didn't feel it was important to COVID. And as a parent with a kid, it was a little concerning that my son could go play in the sport. Um, we've been told multiple different things, one being that we don't have a sports committee, um, the other being that there wasn't access to fields, which I am in progress in working with Gary Nolan, we're starting to get on that committee with the ball field. Up. Okay, and, yeah. And the, option, yeah. the option would have been to create a soccer field up there um, had we had the opportunity or the option. So, A, this coming because our school doesn't have an athletic director right now, so we don't have anyone directing our sports. Um, little school or you? Little school. Right? Little uh, elementary school. Yeah. Our, Sorry. yeah our high school is more than capable. Yeah. But currently, we don't have an athletic director, from my understanding, or anyone who represents our kids in these sports right now. So our town doesn't have the opportunity for our kids in this sport. That's a little concern. So we're looking to see if we can start. We don't. We talk to a lot of people about starting a youth program. Yep. And their advice is to come to you guys because it has to be through the town. <laughs> To get started, so we are just wondering okay. if that's possible. We can. If that's something that you guys are interested in helping us get started, because um, we're going to go from here. Because we've kind of put a dead end with the school. I saw, thought Sean Clough was that let go there. No, so he got he was he Beth Ann Fury was the athletic director last year, and she announced no students that was a whale. 
and had offered to stay on to help get these that everything still going if they needed to find another one and um, our principal said no and that wasn't communicated to any, any parents saying that sports weren't going to happen and that we didn't have skating even when the hand when they said what damn we're all set so we have nobody right now that's yeah. Riley, I emailed twice about trying to start the youth program and she's not responding anymore. So what does Sean do over there? He's just a PE teacher. A what? The PE teacher. So I don't think he really was all that interested in being the athletic person. So this would be for after school and it would so, be, yeah, this yeah. is like so soccer school well not school soccer, but it'd be like soccer and <laughs> basketball. Like Cambridge has a youth basketball program, they have a youth soccer program, they have a separate, we have a separate baseball already. Okay. For a group like our, that is not like our field. Now we're just looking to try and start soccer and basketball outside of the school. So it's more parents so, a board. I got, I got you. Okay. More of a right, committee so. base. <clears throat> gotcha. Yeah, okay. You know, we went 10 years without the uniforms in the basketball program. But Anne was amazing last year. She really stepped up and actually was there to advocate for our kids and to get the program going. And now we don't have her or anybody. And so I know COVID is happening this year, but just for well, I know. we want to like get this rolling for future. I was <clears throat> talking to a friend this afternoon when we decided it isn't just COVID, it's all of 2020. It's yeah. just 2020 is all. Yeah. <laughs> just blame everything on 2020. Um, and I'm, I am assuming that you found other parents that are interested in helping yeah. you so that there's a good, yeah. you always need a core group. If it, yeah. if it just falls on a couple of people, it just ends up being, you know, being too much. I'm not, I'm not sure, Ron, what do we need to, to do and that you're in touch with Gary and that whole crew, because yeah. there's a lot of, that's great the space field, up there. The soccer field, Gary, I spoke to Gary, he's already given permission. They have it set for soccer field to be in between the baseball fields up there. Yeah, yeah. And we so we have map on the board for that for those fields. Okay. So we have all of that set. We just don't know how to get the like if, how to get the program started. What, what do you have to do? Right. So well, sim board started. Yeah, like, similar so with the ball fields committee, which is what they were called for years, right, uh, right. organized the select board basically supported them with grants to build the fields. They supported them with an annual budget, the committee agreed to do fundraising. So if you look at the town budget, you'll see some some structure there, right. which isn't set up for exactly what you said. So right. there's no staff, there's no money, there's no nothing except for really a self-funded softball league. Yeah. It's really, they limit their activity to that. Uh, generally speaking, the ball field activities up there, whether it's softball and tournaments and all those kind of things, cover, cover their expenses. Right. 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 So that's we created that and working with the ASA program. So we 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 host men's states, we host women's states, some some of them co-ed states, and through the ASA program they fund us back. And I don't know if you've been up for our facility up there, but it's actually quite impressive. Yeah, yeah. no, it's it's so, it's terrific. But and it would be but it would be great to have it more used actually with right. for this sort of thing. It would be super. So right. So it's gonna be a relationship, I think, from the historic <laughs> ball fields ownership of the fields. Yes. And how anybody else is gonna enter into that, which is what the select board would have to figure out. So whether it's a whether it's just people sitting down to work out those details, scheduling issues, maintenance issues, you know, where do you store your gold, you know, all yeah. that kind of stuff has to be it's it's also a way to be able to get great money. That is available to our kids because right now running it through the school or even fundraising right now it has to go through the school and you know right and this makes you independent of that right which our, can school, be, yeah. our school is one of the one of the only schools that didn't charge for youth sports which is why we didn't have the new uniforms but gotcha. also, okay. our youth, you know, when i started coaching four years ago you know they used to say high park on it, but then a kid did a uniform and they say RK on it, and that would be the only thing that left on this side. And the next one would say HY. You know, I never. They run fast, you can see a word, right? It matters. I've been there. Yeah, yeah. If you're representing a school, sure. And it, I wouldn't yeah. think it would have been a town that we could. And we're still representing high park. It's just 
run by parents with a school. Oh, yeah. So no, no, that's, really yeah. We've got a lot of interest in Fort Patrick. Our son is in fifth grade now, so we've been there since kindergarten. And there hasn't, last year was the only year that sports was actually like a focus for High Park. They, I okay. feel like our, they have, this, yeah. it's not their, one of their main focuses. Yeah, which is right. Understandable. Right. Yeah, exactly. Right. Off. Everybody can only do but, so much, but it's right. So mm -hmm. that's why we as parents want to try and help take that away and then they don't have to worry about it. And we have a lot of support. So you, will you be looking for a budget? From the town? Well, like tell the town of Eaton, they, they, they have one set up for their rec program, it's 4500 bucks. No, we have one set up for baseball associates, right? Yeah. So would it, would it go through that or would it be separate? Well, I don't know. I think that's what right. they're asking. Yeah, we really right. don't know. Like, we just want I, it would be. We try to reach out to a few other towns to see how yeah. they do it. Right. And they're, it's just that we have to get the other day and really get it on your guys's. Like but I, yeah, I don't, I don't know if you have to represent through the school or, if, or how we pull some responsibilities away from the school and not pull some. Yeah, I can, I can sort of tell you what. So in, in Richmond, I don't know if you're familiar with Volunteers Green, uh, down by the river. It's right in the, right in the village, and they have a huge, expansive area where there's multiple parties, so to speak, that share that space. Yeah. So they have a recreation committee, which is sort of the umbrella town group that works with the select board to figure out all the finance and grants and all that stuff. So they, that's the avenue to the money, so to speak. But all of the programs, whether it's getting volunteers, who rakes the ball field, who moves the goalposts, all those details, the town, after years of trying to do that through volunteer committee of the six or seven core recreation committee people, only could accomplish that with parents coming in as the generations go right. to do that detail work. Right? So there was this umbrella town committee that reported and heard from the parents group that was for that season. And they'd have like one lead parent for two or three years as the kid was going through. And then they'd pass it off. The, that new person would get the bucket of goods. All the supplies, all the balls or whatever, and they'd pass it. And then the parents would say, hey, we're a little behind out here. You know, the fields are just you know, really so the town worked with the guard and redid all the field sets, you know, as a way to again support the youth program, mm -hmm. but didn't put the burden of fundraising that kind of project on the parents. So that's kind of it's, so it's think of operations versus capital almost. The funding and the capital all were run through the committee and the select board, but the operations of the select board didn't want any part of chasing parents down to who's going to get that box. Right. They wanted this to give kind of a self-feeding, you know, okay, Matt, I got three years into the, you know, you, you, and you tell all the parents, now you, you one year person, when it comes to three years, you're going to be, you know, you're going to be up for a tour of two or three. Right. And that's the conversation that we would hear about is, oh yeah, we got somebody. And then there was a gap where whatever, whatever reason, the parents could not get together. Yeah. The rec committee had to step in and try to do a little bit more you know, organizational skills, I guess you want to call it, to get that back on the ground. But, so that's how the, the select board would say, we are taking our current ball fields committee and sort of having this umbrella think, committee. Right. And then there would be a softball group and there'd be a baseball or softball right. group under that. Like, like more so, they run it out of three separate accounts afterwards. So each sports so we have to have it on accounts. Yep. So, Funds in or funds out each for yeah, because you might do your own fundraising. You know, we, right now it's five or six thousand a year that the softball tournaments uh, gain, gain from the concession stand you know, yeah. to help their operations. That money that comes in is going to have to go to the soccer activity, you know, as these new revenues right. come in. So we might get the same so it, amount of money it, for each of the programs, it, but we're going to have to track it separately here so that when you have the new uniform request. You know there's well, you know what you got, or you know how much money you need yeah. to raise to get there. Right. I, I would check with Deer and Noma. Yeah. We're, we're close to Deer because what I'm thinking of is maintenance. Uh, I know he puts in every year for the mowing of the fields. Yeah. And I'm sure that you probably want the same big person mowing, seeing he's there already. Yeah. To, to oh, see yeah. what it is and add that <coughs> to his budget to do your fields too. <coughs> and how you work it out and be up to you guys. Because he already does the soccer fields are pretty much in the softball field, so he they're already it's like wherever he already knows the whole thing. Okay. So it, it would all just I mean we probably figure out how to split it. So I so I think but just let's see to sort of make it official. I think what what we probably need to do is 
is to, and if somebody could hear, to give Gary a call and say, we'd like him to sit down officially with yeah. them yeah. and start to work and come back and say next month, present just a rough idea of a structure of yeah. how they could do this, of how you could work together, what it would look like. Um, Cause then that, that sort of, that moves it from, they've had some conversations mm -hmm. to sort of officially you have the conversations, I think. And then how do the involvement come parallel with the school. That's, that's, I, well, I don't I don't know that you I don't know that a, I don't think you have to worry about the school. What, what do you think the link would be? What do you think the link would be from the school as far as uh, communication would be one? Well like so we didn't do a soccer time this year. Yeah. How did that get, how did that fall into the cracks for our kids? I didn't understand so that. We didn't have a soccer. We're the only town in the Long County that didn't run a soccer program. Did you go to the school board at all? Well, we're starting here. We, 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 oh, I didn't know if the, if the school board had a, you know. It honestly was not helpful when I reached out. Because I had a bunch of we had to go through the school, we had to go through more development. No, no, it shouldn't have. No, been. shouldn't have. No, been. but I, I, I think what we, what we need to do, and just you know, to see if we can ease your frustration and make some progress, is if you want to, or I'm, I'm happy to call Gary as well. I know Gary and say, here, would you get together with these folks and talk to them, or who would like to do I that? Did, I did get together with Gary three months ago. Yes, she should. You're already there. Okay, well, and just say that we, as the select board, are asking you officially to do that. And for that group to come together with you guys and to come back next month with some kind of a, okay, here's how we can make this work. Here's what we need to do. And then I think once you've got that kind of a structure, then we just sort of say to the school and the school board, here's, you know, we got a group of parents that are interested in doing this and here's what they're doing. And here's how you can help, whether it's you need to sign up for whatever you need to sign up for. And then, and then you're, um, it sounds like it, you need to meet with the school board. A little bit. Yeah, because well, because it'll be fussing. Can't hurt. The soccer, yeah. The soccer and the baseball can now be separate, not in the school. But if we want to do a basketball program, we have to do through the school because the gym is out. Sure, the gym's there, right? You want to check public? But does it then? Then kids, uh, mm -hmm. public. Oh, right. Say they play Hyde Park and say they play Johnson. Do they go to Johnson plays? And then they go. Do they go to Cambridge and play or? Wherever. Yes. So, so you would be using the, the school buses, the transport. No, no, I think mostly no, parents no, take them. No, no parents would bring them. Yeah, parents, parents take them. Yeah. Yeah, for elementary school, it's always parents. Yeah. yeah. I just got to say that I did this for 20 years with my kids. Yeah. So I know what you guys are going through. If you want to write <laughs> my name down, I'll give you my number and I'll get you in contact with some people. Okay. And I'll tell you what I did back in the day there you go okay it probably still work today let me rolling, if we just whoop. rolling okay. yeah. 279-7129 because we had a lot of fundraisers back then well that's, that's but, what we need to get into the same boat i'm okay with doing that you know like I'm but, involved in the Newport Rec, where they, they run a father-daughter dance in the middle of winter. You know, I, I give them that we do the same thing, but I'd like that money to come back into not going to our athletic director. Right. There was a lot of money spent on our athletic director. We got nothing back, and parents could never get involved. No, well, that, yeah, see, this will, yeah, this is the, my, my this, is, this is the way to do it. Yeah, thanks, thanks for doing it, right? Playing sports, and I had on the corner. Well, that, that's 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 the struggle we're having right now. Our kids are playing video games. We're the only town in the whole entire yeah. county, and when we call up Diane Riley and say, "Diane, what's going on here? We don't have an athletic director." They're going to call and say, "Hey, where are soccer signups?" We don't have the option to go to other schools. Yeah. We miss signups. Hey, Susan. So uh, yeah. Like yeah. Hang on just a second. We'll let you. Maybe you have some help. Well, that's that's right. We got okay. Now, if we can unmute and get some other public comment here, and if you'll identify I yourself do. first, yeah. <clears throat> Uh, it's Marianne Donnelly. Yeah. And um, I just wanted to tell those folks that as I am um, one of the co-chairs of PI, Partners in Education, we are kind of the community group or, um, that supports the school, or the PTO, for lack of a better uh, definition. And just, uh, I think we would be happy to figure out where we might overlap and be able to support you guys and uh, it, whether it's just communication, getting the word out or helping put something on or um, 
It's just we are an uh, organi organization just for the elementary school. So, and we would be happy to, to work with you guys and see where we can. Okay, awesome. Thank you. There we go. Okay. There. You have a contact? So, Anybody yeah, else? You can, um, if you go to our Facebook page, Partners in Education, and it's linked on the school website, yeah. um, you can just email us from there. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Sure. So in, in terms of, I still think one of us should give Gary a call so that it's... He knows Gary. He worked with him every day. And I'll tell you right. what, Shelly was involved in it really well. Yeah. I think at one time she was the president of the association. Ah, okay. So talk to Shelly too. Okay, if you'll just tell Gary that we've asked him... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure they are, and they say. And so, if next month sort of come back with a plan, and you, you know, connect up with this other group, and and, and that's it, that's we'll figure right out what you need from there. About. Right now on that board is Gary, Deb, Clayton, Clayton, yeah, and and Cam Hardy. Yeah, yeah. They are all in their seventies, right? I know. Hadn't they, did, hadn't they recruited somebody else? What's your point? Uh, yeah, I was say, was yeah. and what's wrong with that? Sorry. We hosted a tournament last weekend, and we are the next group that does the meeting. So it's all voluntary. I'm that guy that shows up, but you know, Gary will tell you that I've done, the, I've done all the fences for the last eight years of Gary. Well, and but it. Without, it, the word do you find there, without the word being out there, without some type, maybe without. Some type of communication that gets these people involved, there's not. You know, we have a field that's overgrowing, we have, you know, a field that's not being used. In Finnegan's field, the only access our kids have to a soccer field is 45 second coverage that come through it. You know, there's some reason why we don't use those fields for soccer. Right, right. Well, well it sounds to me as though what you have is the beginning of closing that age gap. <laughs> and, what about, and the, what about getting... the, the land up back here? I used to use that all the time. Have you seen it up here? No. Go out up around the road up here. Yeah. We don't use any of that. Uh -huh. I didn't even know that was existed yet. That well, that's that's town land up there. Yeah. Future cemetery. Yeah. Well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Long way to go. <laughs> yeah, a, lot of, a lot of land up there. Yeah. yeah. There is. There's a lot of land up there. But I used to. We used to play softball up there all the time. Right. Be great. Either that or soccer or anything. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. So obviously there isn't a shortage of land. Now what we just need is the organization. So yeah. if you guys, first of all, um, thank you for being involved, parents and wanting to do this. We'll um, come back with that plan, and then once we have that, we can we can talk with the uh, you know you guys can talk with the school board, but we can also you know once you come back with a plan, we can drop a note from the select board to the school board saying you know we're supportive of this, and here's a group, and we're looking at at more expansion of recreational opportunities for young people in town. Does that work? Thank you. Off to, off to, a, off to a roaring start anyway. Look, <laughs> look forward to seeing you next month. Yeah. 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 Terrific. That's an agenda item. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. I gotta figure out how to get rid of this. Oh boy, now our favorite conversation. Roads. Hey, I'm Mark. How are you? Um, I'm so, muted. I'm muted. Okay. You're good. I'm, I'm good. Okay. Um, do we want to go in, in this order? Project, what do we? Do we want to start with the unclassified? How about just starting the update on the current project so we know what's going on? Then we'll get to unclassified roads. And... How many do you got? Yeah. <laughs> <I've> got... <laughs> so we still got a, we marked out and met with Norm on the turnaround order there. Okay. Need a, a dry day to get up there so we don't go down with a bank because we're in the rain. Uh, he, we went over and marked everything. He was good with everything that we marked out. We'll have the topsoil around it. And we'll 
he was looking for some, uh, well, we had to put something out on the bank of sales, so he liked the idea of boulders instead of crosswalks. Started looking at so we to do that for him to keep him happy up there. Okay. And you said we have access to those rocks and stuff. Will the back will be able to set those? Yeah, back will be able to set them, but I don't really have access to that. Well, probably don't get money in the middle of the You might be able to start. I, I'm just flashing to my head. I, I had the same thought when I was road commissioner in Elmore. And um, there's a field, a cast field up there. There's full of rocks up there. And, and they're all piled together. If you had something, you just pick them up and set them in the body and stuff like that. And talk to Michelle, or um, I don't remember his dad's name, but uh, um, either one, they might be able to lead you in the right direction. And I think they'd be accessible uh, in the field with uh, heavy equipment. But anyway, just a just a thought. That's the first one. Again, another thing too is I know that Fish and Wildlife prefers rocks over uh, guardrails and stuff like that now. So uh, um, I can get to your contact information if you want to see where they're getting their stuff too. For that. Okay. I'm sure there's enough rocks up in Little Buddy's pet there to do anything you want to say. Could be, yeah. Yeah. When do you expect that to be done? When I get a couple of nice days. Okay. Without rain. Without, without rain, okay. Yeah, I'm just getting a little mushy out there right now. You want to get that stay water before rain. No, oh. without rain. Okay. And the same thing with the prospect street turn around. We have to do that where we can get a stay water soon enough. And down board. Which one did you say? Prospect, prospect street. street. Oh, prospect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's easy. Yeah. I apologize for interrupting. Can you just repeat what um, Mark is saying? It's just, it's hard to hear. Want to come up here closer to the mic? Sit in the middle, middle, Mark, you'll be able to hear that. Mic yeah, just a sec, we'll get, we'll get Mark up closer. Thank you. It's, it's all hard with masks <laughs> on, too. <laughs> okay, let's see, go, I think it's probably back to Prospect Street. And Ron, we have a, it says a, a road design update. Yeah, so there's a couple of things, uh, and I, I know there's a couple of people that are interested in what's happening here. So the uh, Summit Engineering Survey folks went out and they took a bunch of shots on trees and edges and all sorts of field elevations so they can look at stormwater and whatnot. So they're in the process of developing the uh, final plan. I uh, think the intention was to develop this plan and start passing it around to the neighbors and have the board look at it and do all that stuff over the winter uh, because it includes um, lane widths, what to do about the turnaround, uh, what to do about the median, the, the middle part around the loop, uh, the limits of the turnaround area itself, how do you deal with stuff. So it's a little more complicated once you start creating things like a better turnaround or a island in the middle that collected water and was contributing to the degradation of the road over the last you know, 30 or 40 years. So how do you fix all those things at once? It takes a little more time than we have, obviously. We do have a paving contract with Hutchins, where Hutchins was supposed to grind up and redo that road in a, in a different way than it's headed now. So that project was stopped. And the redesign, if you want to call it that, is in, is right. in motion. The last meeting with select board was a, uh, basically, I think we left it as a shim and overlay and maybe a little bit of a crescent area towards the end to help the trucks stay out of the mud when they're, when they're down there plowing. And then another project, which would come later, which is what we had bid, which was digging up the road, and putting two layers of pavement down and you know, the, more, so the more expensive plan. And we've had watershed consulting and summit look at stormwater issues. Um, and they're coming up with some ideas on what's, how to treat the stormwater there. So it protects the road and doesn't flood neighbors' driveways and those kind of stuff that uh, create the puddles. So I think the next step is the Hutchins contract. So the Hutchins contract was awarded with a complete paving by November 1. And Prospect Street was on there, Pitch Hill was on there, Centerville was on there, and Hillside was on there. Um, 
what do we do with that contract is the question. So uh, talking to Mark and EJ from Hutchins, sort of a short list of possible changes from the original contract, which Hutchins is good, good with, but they're trying to get back to uh, a sort of a, a project that was the same scope as our, what we did. So to do that, we have to fill that void that they had scheduled yeah, for work. It was a big void that was 2,600 linear feet of paving. Uh, the prospect was a reclaimed two layers where the board seems to be headed now with a shim and overlay, which is less, a lot less. Uh, so Mark talked to Hutchins about the town garage, getting the tank in the ground, doing the lines and trying to get the grade right on the yard. That's one. That was almost $30,000 for paving once I didn't see the limits yet, but apparently it includes regrading and setting pavement where trucks now when, when you say regrading and setting, it, is that Hutchins doing it or is that uh, them just doing the paving? That would be us. Uh, grading, grading, it. grading it, okay. Yeah, we're yeah. black top and you're talking about black top into the yard there. So we got to dig it up and tie those lines together for that. Uh... It's not black top now, is it? Oh yeah. yeah it's, well, it's so broken up. Lot of, some of it's <laughs> yeah. broken up. I was going to say but, it's, it's sort but, of yeah. But it's been think... asphalt for a long time, but they've only been able to dig like uh, you know a half a load of pavement at a time. So if the guys are working in in Hyde Park over the last thirty years, the contractor would dump a half a load of pavement and they'd spread it out. So when you go now, it's just Oh, so it's patched. It's patched and uneven, it's sort of a and now it's patch. out of grade because if you're not paying attention over years, which happens on some roads, the yard gets built up. So we actually have a high point outside the man door mm -hmm. in the front. You mean so your water going back in? Water right? back. Water going in. We can't have that in our well, water separator. Oh, wait, separate it. So, so, separate it. Separate it, but then we'd be pumping <laughs> or whatever. Separate. <laughs> it's one of the, I see Roland shaking his head. I think it's one of those things. If you, if you actually look at a project, you're going to fight off more than you thought you were fighting off in the beginning. But anyway, that's where we're at. So we have, and the other option is would, and I think I just heard this today from Mark through from EJ, was because they had been on Fitch Hill, and that work has to be done next year. They're willing to hold their low bid price and get that work next year. So we kind of have a choice of that. Of that, I don't know if that means not doing the town garage and then be happy to get the pitch hill next year and call it even, or whether they're thinking they want to have work now and they're offering that lower price as an add-on next year. I don't. I'm not clear on that. I didn't have time to chase that kind of a detail down with EJ yet. But that would be a formal contract type thing we have to specify it all. But it's a moving target and the clock is the clock is ticking, obviously. So. We're not going to be able to pave much longer. When's the, when's the plants close? I don't know. EJ's plant, but they own their own plants. They, they all stay going to their gun bigger. So I don't know. I don't know where they What's well, and, and do we have the issue with, of Fitch Hill when doing the, sure. doing the ramp? Is that? Yeah. You've you talked about that, that's all. I emailed that okay. to EJ today. So he has a proposal to do an apron at Fitch Hill. They okay. mentioned an apron at Eden if, if it's needed. I don't, yeah. like I said, I don't know what they're doing as part of the water main. Yeah, I don't know how far they dug up. I don't know how far they dug for the main. Yeah, road. they're, well, they're supposed to be paid. Eden Street, uh, Manaw should do when they're coming back. They're supposed to do that. On they Eden Street. Street. They shouldn't have. Then they done. They no, we're just talking to putting an apron for the winter in case you don't get it done. Planning so salt will go around from dirt and soften it. So. No, that's there. That's not related to the town. The, the Eden Street is 100% water village. Not looking to do a town. Right. Oh. Fitch Hill, we partnered with them. That's why we're talking right. about Fitch Hill. Oh, yeah. So, as far as we know, all the dirt on Eden Street is going to be buried with pavement by winter. That's what our understanding is. Okay. Yeah. So, that shouldn't be an issue. The Centerville Road. Uh, is a shipment overlay that's not changed from the original bid. So it's really what the, the pitch hill question, if the board's comfortable looking at, uh, and of course, <laughs> I told Mark today, I said, okay, so we'll, if we modify the contract and take Hutchins pitch hill and turn it into finishing the garage lot and getting that drainage fix as well as those, you're going to have a lot of busy stuff getting that tank in the ground then because the paving people are going to be on a tight time frame and Worst case scenario. So, so tank is ordered then. 
Uh, Tank should be here the first week of November. That's pretty good. Yeah, we thought it was going to be mid November. So it's going to be like, you know, this much time by the time all this stuff hits it. But so it should be ready the first week of November. Yeah. So anyway, so that's kind of, we're juggling with a lot of things here. But the concept for the board, the decision for the board is, is focused on two things it's confirming that it's shipment overlay only on Prospect Street to the existing width. <laughs> allowing the Fitch Hill work that was now canceled to go to the town garage and ex and potentially accepting uh, EJ's holding his low bid for the Fitch Hill next year. I am not in favor of paving up to that town garage this year. I'm not. For the simple reason, you're going to dig that yard up. Then you're going to have all your frost settling in right off the bat. They've got along with it the way it is now. Why don't we just wait till next spring or summer to do a decent job? Don't do something. So do the point. excavating for the lines yeah, and leave do, it? Do what they got to do. They plow that with the loader. That'd be interesting. If they don't plow it with a loader, they've got a loader there. It's not like you're going to go in there with a pickup or something. Then, but then. I mean, that's a waste of money up there right now. Think about it. So what we have to figure out is. If we don't do that, what, sat, what Hutchins can do, okay, so we don't do that, then what does Hutchins do that fills in that gap? Does he have to do anything? Yeah. He's asked, well, he's he, asked for some makeup work. Yeah. So he, the question for if you don't want to well, do, do Battle Road again where it's all tracked. If you don't want to do the, the garage, then there's other roads that are behind. Right. So, But then we have a problem with getting the culverts out of the way first, which is kind of the new... If you if you're going to do culverts first on your projects now, there's I asked Mark how many roads are ready to be paved. Well, I did. Yeah, how much are you talking about? Wait, wait. What? How much are you talking? Could could he? Yeah. Could how he, much? Could he start at the at the town line and go so many feet from to be on center road? Yeah. Well, there must be a road in town here that we can think of that don't really need much work done, and just we can just resurface it. I mean, there's got to be. I mean, bro. I'll tell you another Which one? Bean. Bean, bro. <laughs> I was waiting. I was waiting for that one. I was going to. I'll tell you what, Bree. No, I'm just saying. Yeah, well, that's fine, but where would we do it? That's four corners off center road. Do the hill. Touch and sidewalk? Yeah. Not the hill. Not under this contract. Hill, but the other side. Needs an apron. Yes, yes. The, the west side of that intersection oh, okay. yeah. needs about a fifty or sixty foot apron. Exactly. That's a, that's a bad. That's a bad. That's all fail. Not but bad. I don't think you're going to see one be jumping all over for sixty feet here and sixty feet there because the mobile. Well, the hill, the hill across the road is about equal to Fitch if you add a little bit on the west side. So if that whole intersection is done, those two legs are done. Those are probably ready to be done. And we could knock that off because that was part of the center road. <laughs> but you're saying doing the hill. Yeah, going well, the hill and the pitch hill are close in distance. And then a little bit on the west side of the intersection. Yeah. So that intersection will be done and then only center road next year. Gonna be done. Well, it's, 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 you're just playing with a pot of money that's yeah. got a movie. You gotta spend it some, somewhere at some point. Now, how much are we talking about to spend that they want? Uh, this contract was, oh, I think it was uh, 90, I think it was 90 something. Well, I think I'll be more money with more. Doing it at the well four corners. Spent. There we go. Yeah. But then at the garage. Do you want me to, should we ask, so we're ready to go in the spring, should we ask him to hold this and, and keep Fitch Hill as part of the contract, but just Otherwise, you have to go out to bid again. Is the question, yeah. and I don't, I don't know that. It's up to you guys if you want to go out to bid for Pitch Hill next year or or have Hutchins, who's already bid on it, keep it. Don't forgive that, and we'll hold his bid. Yeah, we want to hold his bid, and instead of doing the garage, we do yeah. the four corners. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes more sense than yeah. having all that heavy equipment up there. You know, I'd like to see a nice job done up there next spring or next summer. And 
you know, get the tank in, right. let it, everything settle, yeah. and, you know, yeah. it's, if they got to plow the yard with a loader, it's not a big deal. Does that make sense, Mark? Sure. Mark says he's been easy along with tonight. Of course. <laughs> Well, well, it's all contingent on, you know, talking to Hutchins, because right, contract right. amendment, yeah. and we'll write it all up and all that yeah. business. But if that's sort of in the ballpark, Mark and I can work with EJ. Yeah, that sounds... Uh, Susan or Brian, or Brian maybe for Highway, could be authorized to review all that stuff and issue that yeah, amended right. contract. Yeah. So we don't have to come back to it. Mm -hmm. Right, so work for you, Roger? Yeah. Okay. We should have a motion to authorize Brian. To okay, see so if... if any before we do right see there we got our people trying to remember they're there <laughs> okay anybody want to chirp in on the, i think i think we're good okay um all right that takes we're gonna pop straight back to the winner what's that in front of the shop if you don't, everything off the knees and the heat coming off that building, that's going to be a swamp hall when you have a building. That's going to be the... Uh, well, if you could patch it in where you dig it, I mean, that wouldn't be too much, would it? Well, I'm just saying, we'll pay a patch up through our fix for the winter. Your, your, your ditch, you could probably keep it down to whatever your backhoe width is in there. Can't you do it with your drag box? Probably. Either I just rake it, it ain't going to be that much. I mean, you know, but we'll have to fill it in because that'll be yep, mud. trying to get another yeah. shot. Yeah. We don't take what we yeah. so, um, Either how you do it, either break it in the dragon box, it can be done. Okay, because, we're set. Mm -hmm. Then what we need is a motion. So move. But if Hutchins is here in the village, it could probably go cheaper. Well, we can get the asphalt for them. Just look at that. Mm -hmm. If they're right here. Yeah. Yeah, might as well check with them. Right. Yeah. I'd add that to them. I know yeah. they laid the village more. So it's cheaper than I could buy it. Mm -hmm. Whatever it costs, I did. Yeah. Good thing. Yeah. Being that they're right here. Okay. So what we need a motion to look, pursue the alternative. Authorize Brian. Just, yeah. It. Authorize Brian to fix it. <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'm just helping. You. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. We're good. <laughs> okay. Um, easy seasonal plow. So you copy? We ran the end. Yeah. I know you guys are moving on. I just wanted to thank you very much for working on this and for uh, uh, in consideration and just being transparent about this. It, it was really, it's really helpful. And it sounds like you guys are, that you guys are considering lots of different um, long-term effects and how to best move forward with this plan. And you're going to be bringing that around in the winter time. Yeah, we'll get it sort of get through this first part. And then um, I know they're already working on a couple of plans. Um, and when we do that, give you guys a call and you can come in and look at them. And we don't even have to do that at a meeting. You can come in sometime and sit with Ron. And, I can post it. And, yeah. And, you know, so that, so that you can see it and do some feedback so we're ready for it next spring. We didn't hear everything. What, what's it about? This is Prospect Street. Oh, Prospect. Okay. Yeah. Prospect Street. Yeah. 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 And yeah. I was, I, and I really wanted to make sure you all heard that we really, really appreciate you know, putting all this work in and being transparent and helping us understand what's going on and, and just communicating it. It's really, I know it's not easy and I really appreciate it. We're, we're, we're also sorry it didn't happen in the first place. The communication and stuff, but it, uh, that's okay. live and learn. Wait, yep, yep. Well, you know. Thank you, Roland. I appreciate that. Nice to have people involved. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Okay. Pat him on the back. Uh, <laughs> I can't drink with those masks. <laughs> I know. I know. It's hard, isn't it? Um, seasonal plow. Okay, because we said remember with things that we were gonna we're running the ads and we're we're keeping our. Uh, the people that do our audits happy so things aren't automatic and uh what happened <laughs> i can tell you yeah. <laughs> uh, we have one applicant 
but I took the ad out in the uh, News and Citizen for seasonal plow operator, which is basically on call position with a limited budget that Mark manages. Uh, yeah. Regular hours plus overtime hours. Uh, Michael Reno is uh, known to everybody. He's done it for two, four seasons now. I don't know, maybe three or four from that last track. Uh, and he'll come in and, and be the, the small truck operator. Two. 18. Okay. Yeah, so 18. Yeah. It seems like four. <laughs> is the ad still running? No, it closed on Monday. It closed on Monday. I don't know if we can table that. Uh, it's up to you. I'm just telling you. We have to be, yeah. The ad said close Monday. Today's the Tuesday, and we have one applicant. And we what we haven't done yet is talk to Mark about the position in general. So, and I, I started talking to this about Mark, which is on his application, he says snow plowing, right? So that's kind of the concept. But what he actually does is he works sometimes 40 hours, 50 hours as almost a fifth operator. Yeah. And also provides his other skills, which is, which not everybody will bring. So the conversation with any applicant is what are they bringing for this position? Not It's not just snow plowing per se, which is, I guess it's just by the fact that he's the fifth person there. It okay. becomes part of the part of the team, and that's one of the questions we have because he does have limited hours. He could exceed those budgeted hours if he actually does do fifty hour weeks all winter. So Mark's job as a supervisor really needs to be watching that, and if and be clear with whoever's hired. If if Friday's a, a day's Luber day that he always talks about. That's one way to manage that person is you you don't come in on Friday. We need you for snow plowing plus. And I was trying to I was trying to get from Mark what the plus was because I know I know Michael is the, he's the logger during the the nice months. If we're using somebody in a different way than we're advertising, or then we need to be clear with between the employee and the employer what that job is. So right now it's seventeen dollars an hour is what you agreed to last year. So that's what the that's kind of where we're at. If the if you want to make a delayed decision, then we have to worry about the winter weather turning. Uh, typically, the person's hired for no. You don't get no benefits, right? No, nope, no benefits. Usually hired mid November, work through mid April. And just sometimes I'm curious to see what the other work would be other than winter plowing. Yeah, well, that's, that's the plus part that I was trying to get from Mark because if if there is an added value such as this uh, hazard tree removal, you know, where we don't have to call in a company to come in and do it because Michael's experiences with hazard trees, and that's a benefit to the high Park taxpayer. Yeah, but we don't, we don't move too many trees in one. No, I'm, I'm giving you an example. Yeah, we move a lot more. Yeah, but it's falling down. Yeah. So I'm just giving you an example of- uh, Right over. Right, that's what we need to yeah. hear from Mr. French is like, if whoever's hired, if you close yeah. it today or want to extend it, uh, Early November is when we're most likely to need them. <laughs> Put it that way. So, right. If you want to keep it open for another couple of weeks, I'd have to get an ad in, I, I guess, or do something. Yeah, yeah. It should be advertised again since it was advertised with a closed date already. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's that's where we are today. It's up to you guys. Yeah. 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 Not sure. So we'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> um. Well, what do you want? Do you want to keep advertising or? I, I'd like to play. I think. I think what we should do is go into executive session and talk with Mark about it. That's what I think. Do you want to table it then till the end, or do you? Or we can table it to the end. Wants to stay yeah, that's fine. You can do that, and then we can that keep, talk about. That, keep, that keeps working a, a long there's, time. There's a, there's a no, I, I, we I, just, I, we I just want to. I just talk about it. That's all. But it's personnel issues. What's that? There's other stuff we can talk about if we want to. Yeah, yeah. So we can just do all that at that time. Well, except I don't know that we want to make Mark sit through the whole meeting to talk about a little piece of executive session that involves him and the rest of it involves other stuff, I think, right? We call him too. Well, I, I, I know I Mark has said some things. That's why I want him to bring it out. Well, I see folks just like that. Well, we, we can do that too. Yes, you can do that. We can take five minutes. Okay. 
All right. Why don't Why don't we do a little? It's not too cold outside. We're gonna We're gonna go into an executive. Well, session. well, or we. How about we can mark? Let's take care of Bean so they can go. Okay. And Mark can stay through the road stuff. That's okay. Yeah. We can oh, yeah. do that. So yeah. how about we'll we'll hold that and we'll go on to two two two. Oh, let me. Uh, I can even do the grand after the um, Beam Road. <laughs> Introduce yourself. <laughs> I'm Jerry Smith. Who does a lot of homework. What's that? I said who does a lot of homework. I do do a lot. You do. It's, it's, it's impressive. I like your little maps. Oh, thank you. Has everyone seen the little maps? Yeah. Okay. Good. So, my understanding, the main reason why we're here this evening is we feel by property owners that are at the end being right there feel it would be very good to have the hill from Clark's driveway down to Sherry's driveway if you want to call it that uh, ditch which the town has always done for as long as I have been around which is 25 years and before that and are no longer doing it. and we're seeing more runoff, we're seeing more uh, problems as far as the road getting eaten up and so on. And it seems to me like the town should continue to do that because you always have. Um, also, halfway down the hill is, from my understanding at least, uh, still um, class three road, so you can at least do half of it. Um, and also, if you've been looking at the stuff that I've been researching, um, I think personally that class three goes down past Sherry's house. Um, from what um, it seems on the town maps, nothing about to my thinking if you want, or whatever you'd like to do. I can't quite hear you. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I think that class three roads, and I think um, it's pretty straightforward that it actually goes down past uh, Sherry Heckler's property. Uh, it doesn't stop at the top of Clark. Uh, so that's my theory in all this, which means that it should be ditched as far as being maintained and plowed and everything else that goes along with that. Now, look at my map. It's Sherry, and, and it's a class three roll. Um, well, there's a discussion on that, obviously. Ron thinks right. it's not. Oh, no, no I, I don't have any thoughts on this. All I say is that when we have a general highway map, which is the official highway map for Hyde Park, which every town in the state of Vermont has one, Morristown, everybody has an official highway map that right. V-Trans produces. Right. They list out the mileage of all your class three and all the class fours and all the trails and whatnot, and they've mapped them all, and that's the official map. When you look at the official map and take the mileages, as of today, there's lots of history out there. The class three, which is your year-round maintenance road, goes up to the Clark's driveway, and then it turns to a class four, keeps going, it sort of bears to the left, and goes down the hill almost all the way to the mailboxes, and it stops. And then it's a private unclassified road, much like Sylvain, because we plow out to the end, which is a turnaround at Mr. Smith's property. So that's all, I don't have a thought on that. I'm just telling you what the general highway map, which is what we follow, has. So, so with, that, with that measurement off that map, the class four stops halfway down the hill, the Clark stays on the hill. We say Clark did that. That's a big I guess, I guess what yeah, I want to, I guess no, I, what I want to do is do a right. walk, site walk or something on it. Uh, well, for the last, to get a better idea, I'm sure. The last 44 years now, from what I figured out this afternoon, uh, the town has been getting state money for Class 3 road for 0.22 miles past the Clark driveway. To, to the mailboxes. <laughs> to the V. Past that. <laughs> past the V. Ask the V if you go 0.22 miles. I mean, I've, I've run into this before. When, when I say the V, <laughs> I'm saying you go left to Chrissy's. Correct. In mine. And right's to you? No, left's to me. Right. You're left also? I'm left also. Okay. He's so right it's, Yeah, we're right beside. Well, I didn't realize. Yeah. Really we're both at the end. We're both at the end there. Uh, but yes, so 
if you go 0.22 miles from where, well, let's start at the beginning. Garfield Road to Clark's driveway is 0.38 miles. And for 60 years, there's been a little nub of Road 52 at the end of Road 50, which is what Bean Road is, it's Road 50. I don't know how that got there, quite frankly, because it used to be downhill, 52 was. But anyway, that's where Ron's feeling, I think, that the class three ends. But then there's another 0.22 miles shown on the highway map that if it's on the old road 50, is going through the woods, there's no road there. So again, town's getting paid for woods uh, maintenance. But um, so looking at the history, back in the late 60s, the town took away 0 0.15, 0 0.17 miles of, of Highway 50 and made Class 4 that much longer. And that ended it then where the Clark's driveway is. Now, what are we calling the Clark's driveway? The, where the pond is? John, oh, okay. John and Judy. John and Judy, that their driveway, yeah, it's okay. right there. John and Judy's Clark's yeah. driveway there. So, so you're saying I have to be take a left, the town will go farther than that? Oh, yeah. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Then how come there's a sign on it says private road? Because that's what the town keeps telling us that it's private road, and we figure we might as well take advantage of that for the moment. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean I think that goes it goes further than that. Uh, and the reason I say that is because in 1973, I have it written down or thereabouts, the town added back to Highway 50, 0.22 miles. They took away 0.17, they added back 0.22 <laughs> and said it was an error in measurement. Well, that 0.22 goes from, again, the Clark's driveway down to where a barn used to be with a milk operation down there at the end of that road. And so I think they just measured down to that barn because by that point, uh, the old town 50 road didn't exist. I guess I want to do a walk site. Yep. Um, that's what I want to do, but get out of here. I, think I, I can show you on the map that I have there. Did you see that? Yeah, I got it. You got yeah, there, yeah, we got it. Dave's got it blown up. If you see the picture from 1963, yeah, the aerial picture, you yeah. can see where the road co curves around to the but side. Every, every picture I look at, I get just a little bit more confused. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy for him. But I think what happened sometime, obviously, before 1963, okay. they put in the road, but it's now the present road, down to the barn and the house that were down there, and they eliminated that extension of 50 and across the 52 and said, we're not going to use that anymore. And the town said, fine, we'll get rid of that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the town came back and added in that 0.22 to uh, make that class three and have been doing that ever since. But you said the town used to ditch it? They have ditched it for Wait. years, yeah. Uh, up until the last couple of years. Okay. Uh, when you stopped. I can, I can make this pretty simple. The, the, <laughs> now you do <laughs> Yeah, that's right. <laughs> if you set aside the history for now, that we have a situation of an unclassified highway, at least, not either a portion or not or whatever, but, and we potentially have a class three that goes through the woods, right, which is the right turn at Clark's. Yep, you want to call so, that. Yep. So on the left turn at Clark's, you end up with the class four and maybe an extension of a three, depending on where the point two two was misapplied or whatever. But in order to fix all that, we have two choices. You can either petition and ask VTrans, who's the controller of the official highway map, because they want to control the amount of money the town gets in aid. Okay. They kind of work together on that, on that whole process. And, and continue to work with them. So this earlier this week, I think it was maybe even last week, I sent an email to the mapping folks and said, hey, we've got some conflicts in here with your map. 
and it's their map. Can you help us figure it out? So Carrie Alley is uh, one of the mapping staff people up in, in Montpelier, and she's starting to do the same thing you're doing, trying to collect information <laughs> from their own records. And as I get it, I send it to Jerry, and we try, you know, as we build this case of what's going on, it's becoming more evident that the select board just needs to make decision. Do you want to keep the class three, which is on the current 2017 map, which is the most current map, going through the woods, or do you want to upgrade that to get to Trombley Hill? Because that's where that road, the road connects that's to right. Trombley Hill. Yeah, because that used to go right over to Baker. Right. Right. Well, that's going in another direction. Right. Yeah, so that's Clark's old so, farm. Right. Right. How far did the town ditch down through there? Okay, right now, the last several years, they stopped at the Clark driveway. See, and that's where I don't know where the Clarks go. Right, I understand. Top how, of the hill. How many feet? They get a big pond right out. They, they're going 0. 0.38 miles. <coughs> they're taking responsibility for ditching from Clarkfield Road. Okay? And then there's another, depends on what you want to do. Uh, right. there, there's another section that you used to ditch, right. and but that you haven't since, I guess, 2015 when Ron decided that we needed to figure all this out. No, no, but look, that, that part of the question, is that a class four or a private? That's, well, you can't, I, you can't ask the question because there's conflicting information. So there isn't an answer. The, that's part the of the best, the, I think Roland has a good idea for anybody that's not familiar. So it yeah. does help to get out there and walk in. Based on that, the board can just simply decide what to do. Do you want to keep the class three going well, through the woods? Do you want to turn that to a public trail? That's what we did up on Webster Road, right? Yeah. So you keep the right away, the old right away, but yeah. you get rid of that classification because it no way beats class three if you bear to the right. <laughs> no. And do you want to upgrade the classification and have a survey done and take that road back and take the private roadside back so that we have a public turnaround at the end where we plow down? So that, well, that clears up the you know the whole it, it, and, and that's going to take six eight months to clear that up well it's a survey it's but it's deeds it's all that stuff. i i just want to throw onto the table i mean and until we get that problem solved i think we should probably walk and help these people if we kept ditching that in the last few years i think we ought to go up there and ditch that it's just like these roads that we plowed that weren't even town roads it's one of the two last unclassified so, roads until we get this figured out, I think we should probably go up there and help these people and get it ditched or whatever we got to do. Well, you're not because helping, you're not helping the people. You're you're deciding to maintain a public, unclassified private road is what you're doing. Yeah. It's, so it's not any so, different than Sylvain plowing in the winter or the upper end of right. Diggins or you know any of these class four roads, which you don't have to plow, but you make these decisions to go ahead and help. So right. so. Yeah. We'll go out, go out and walk it, and that makes sense. Yeah, that's you know that's, that's what that I makes sense. Do. And then we come from here. My question is, what do Mark? What do we need to? Because it, it will take getting through all of this will take five or six or you know. Be, yeah. So what do we need to do between to get through this winter? Is there anything that does it need to be ditched now? Can this wait until we figure it all out and then do it next year? What what needs to happen right now? To be okay through the winter and spring. I would have to go back and look at it then. Okay. Yeah, so you, you yeah. said they, yeah, they haven't ditched it since 15. Yeah, my personal feeling is. So would, would, another, would another winter time in the spring would it affect it at all? Oh, the last two winters, the water runs over and all kinds of stones have gone to carriers. I mean, it's not anything to us, yeah. but it does cause a problem. Okay, right. okay, okay. That's all right. has to Let's do, let's do a walk. Yeah. No, that's all yeah. we need to know. There's an issue. Yeah. 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 So, so we should do it when we go up with Mark. So right. let's set a time. Yeah. Can... So with all the other classified roads, you have this discussion and you have to make, you make this decision because Mark is class three, full year round maintenance, class four by permission of the board, right. unclassified all by the board. So this is the interim step while we yeah. figure things out. So right. even on class four road, whatever it is, even on class four roads, the town's responsible for the walk. No, we understand, we, are, we understand that. I'm just saying that between the, what Mark French or the highway crew is supposed to do, right, under their normal year-round maintenance, right. it's class threes. 
Right. The class fours are your hit or miss things, the, the drainage ditch, right. the drainage. but it's not the full blown maintenance. And it certainly is a bigger decision to start doing private roads, whether it happened by mistake or a map error or whatever, there's, you're not the yeah, only that example is. that we have to clear up. So when right. we get to the decision making part, we found another error, which is a class three going through the woods, which is the right turn. And we need to define what classification you want up to the turnaround. So whether the 0 0.22 gets to the turnaround or not, we still need a big enough turnaround right away to, <laughs> right. to turn around. To turn the around road. Yes. If you want to shorten up that whole road and get rid of everything out there and just have beam road from Garfield to Clark's and cut out all the other roads that go back to Trombley or go out to the end of the road now, that's another option. You can just discontinue everything else and, and just wipe it clean and be done with it. So those are all the choices that the board has to make. You're not bound to do anything based on the history. All you're bound to do is clear things up so that when you have a maintenance and investment by all the taxpayers, we're putting money under a good structure. Well, this is the first time I've heard about it. I will point out, talking about class three going through the woods. Yeah. Uh, you're gonna have to go through Dusty Morton living room to continue class three where it used to be. Would you mind? I thought you might. <laughs> well, for, Depends on the day. We were there first, and then surveyors proved the right away was first. Yes, we were out. They had a case like that. that Patrick Tyler. Oh, years. It was a case yeah. like that in Richmond. I remember when I was there. Oh, yep. They, they, the town okay, so had the road, and they found right. a bigger problem. Okay. So so keep your eyes open. Somebody up. else that we just. So when you want to take a look at it, guys? Yeah, let's. Well, I, I can do it probably, you know, I can do it Saturday. I mean, the rest of the week I'm pretty booked. But whatever works for you guys. I, I'll, you know, I can go up on my own meeting. Saturday morning would work for me. I can do it before I go to work. Yeah. I mean, I gotta get it. Sure, I can. Makes a lot of sense to me. Much better to see it. What time Saturday morning? So we're talking about the 24th. Well, daylight comes at um, the, the, the quarter five. seven. What's that? At about five o'clock. No, oh, that's dark. That's dark. dark. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, it's dark. Chrissy will see you at five o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right along, he says. <laughs> no, no, eight o'clock. Finally? Eight o'clock. Oh. Yep. Yeah. Are right, you guys? Not for me, not for Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> no, you were fine. No, no. Both of them. Mark will look at it. He can, he can look at it, right. <laughs> right. Drive by tomorrow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can, you can you check can it out. You can make some we'll spray marks out. and stuff like you did before. On you know, there where you think the 2.2 .2 is. And, you know, I've been up and I looked at it probably a month and a half ago. Okay. Beautiful area. Mm -hmm. You guys got great area. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it, we it don't is. want anyone to build houses. No, that's okay. We should be on the road. Okay. So How we far do you live from we your live house to your, your to your gravel pit? Oh well, through the field, right? Mean, that's quite a ways. Jeff all the way around, but it's what maybe quarter mile. You have the first, first house on the left. We're huh? all the way at the end. You have the first house. <laughs> well, so we'll, we'll, we'll find corner. out Saturday. When you make the corner. Yeah. Sherry's cottage is on the right. Just as you come around the corner. And we're down on the right, straight ahead. Okay, you're down on the right. Yep. You're on the left. And and we're at the very end. Straight. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So we're going to meet your place? Works for me. Okay. Coffee. Meet at the turnaround. I, I prefer tea. At the plow turnaround. Okay. We meet at the plow turnaround yeah. if you want. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, just so I understand, are we talking about ditching? Are we not just well, ditching? Well, we're going to go look at it and then we're going okay. to talk. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah. Thank, thank you. you for your time. Thank yeah. You. Well, thank you for all the work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, this is good. Man. Looking at the. So do we, do we want to begin the conversation about one more untenable road in Sylvan Drive? I think that's a, do you want to do a site visit at the same time? 
And, and I, you could invite the neighbors or something? Because we that's where you left it last time. You were going to try to organize a neighbor visit. So people can walk that road just to get right. familiar with it again. Um, I can't do this Saturday, so. yeah. <laughs> but you can all go do it. <laughs> well, you, you're familiar with it anyway. Yeah, okay, but, yeah. but that's where we left it with the neighbors. We're going to invite Sylvain, the right. three owners, to meet the board, to walk up the road and just look around and come back kind of stuff so that I people think can... That, means that, that, means that one road would be enough for me. Yeah, I was going to say, let's, yeah, let's, let's deal with this one, one first. Time. Yeah, okay. let's do one at a time. It's like, yeah. okay. <laughs> We're still looking for guests at all, still late though. So. Okay. The, we did the season. Okay, now the uh, the 2021 grants. In the grants and aid program, which the uh, state of Vermont is taking all your money from your property transfer tax returns and whatever, and then sending it back to the towns every year. Yeah. It's the annual program, similar to this highway aid program or the class two baby program, specific to stormwater and taking the um, Hydrologically connected road segments, turning them from fail to good. Right. So this year, if you've been up Diggins Road, there was a bunch of work done with the 2020 money. They didn't get to the top of the hill, which is the 2021 proposal. Okay. So the state's allocated 13,900 to Hyde Park if we want it. Um, so up to the Diggins Road. Yeah, to finish yeah. the Diggins to finish Hill. It. What 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 about that ledge in the middle of the hill right in the road there? Hello? Yeah. Uh, that's what I, <laughs> that's where I was going you're gonna, to that. You got a spring that center there. Well, that's all right. Uh, put, up, put, put ledge, pop it, and then if you have to, you put under drain in it. Yeah. You've got to do drain. something with that ledge. But half of where the ledge is, less class three, uh, less class four road. You're still, you're still plowing it. That's the trouble. You've got to do something to that ledge because Boy, I'll tell you what, I've seen ice there like you wouldn't believe. Yeah. Well, you spent out right there. No, I, 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 I <laughs> We know. Yeah. Yeah. No, I just said that, you know, that's my thought. What are we going to do with that ledge? So this, we accept this grant, that would take care of that. Well, that would help, yeah. How much is the grant? 13900 with a 20% no, match. The grant will be nothing with a ledge. So this is well, stormwater, right? We can talk about that in the second session. <laughs> yeah, no, this is the stormwater, the, the segment that was done this year, which I think includes your section that you're talking about with ledge, is cleared for the grant. Okay. It, okay. The work that was done on the sides is what the grant was for. The upper part is the same thing. We have to do an 100 okay. meter segment. So the grant cleared that 100 meter segment. We move up the hill to another 100 meter segment. segment. I seen water coming right out of that road right by that ledge right in November. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's Mark's had out on his list for a while. I see it coming all winter. Well, I don't go up there all winter after. Usually after November, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there is a uh, motion to apply for the uh, FY21 municipal uh, right. grants and aid and signatures needed. Okay, so need a motion to. Three or more on this paper. We'll put your name in the, the on the list. The uh, project has to be done by June thirtieth, uh, and the match can be in kind labor equipment. So, but it's supposed to be done by November first. Right? <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're planning things a little different. Uh, we're planning things. So a little different. motion to apply for that. Next motion to apply to the grant. Second. You see that. Okay, you get to be three. Three. <laughs> That's right. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All right. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Yeah, okay. Said it was. Wow. Getting good. Okay. Give that back to him. Um. See that. We have anything else? Give it to him for three seconds. So look what he did. Yeah, I didn't realize that you had uh, 150 years worth of stuff stored on this one. <laughs> <laughs> um, Brian. 
Well, we got we got the. Uh, let me see. We got the salt. That's further down in it. Yeah, salt and diesel bulk purchase orders are, uh, are further down. Okay. And anything else? Well, let me see. Hurry up. He wants that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but I found the one Okay. Last night we were talking about salt. Do we want to continue to have that conversation with Mark? No, they start that he's gonna yeah, I found it here. Yeah, okay. um, I had it. Somebody had to play with it. Well, you I lend your toys you to others. Don't be surprised if they get broken. <laughs> yes, Mom. <laughs> right there. Do you got in here six and nine eighty four a ton? That's that twenty five dollars a ton cheaper than it was last year, right? Now going back in time, the high grade crew came to us and said that we installed. Whirling gates, computer whirling gates on the truck is going to reduce the salt 20%. Last year or the year before, whenever it was, the town come to us said we put that buying machine in, spent $17,000 for that, it could re reduce the salt 30%. So a 20% reduction and a 30% reduction and a 25% less in salt. I don't think we need a $92,000 salt budget. That's a purchase order amount. Huh? The budget is ninety two thousand, but your purchase order is what you're authorizing to spend from the budget. So if you want to re reduce this purchase order yes. to some other number, then right. the budget's still there. You 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 you'd only be authorizing. That's what I mean. Purchase order. Yeah, right. yeah. We don't. We can't. We, well, you couldn't adjust the budget too. But that is a different discussion. So is that what my four pails of salt? Yeah. So. Yeah, the budget was definitely based on the ninety dollar a ton or eighty five dollar a ton because we didn't know it was going to drop. It went down twenty five dollars a ton this year. Yeah, really? so we didn't we didn't know that a year ago. Yeah. No, no, I know so, it. So that's uh, that will happen very often. The market no, on the calendar. <laughs> Mark, yeah, without getting on my <clears throat> ad machine there, that's twenty percent, isn't it? Yeah, I mean you could you could drop it eighteen thousand and be sort of recognizing the price drop. If Mark comes up against that, then he'll have to come back to the board and. Tell you what happened. So, so you want to so go to seventy four thousand or something? That's eighteen thousand. About yeah, probably a little more. But you can go to seventy four thousand. Well, it's eighteen thousand. Yeah. This consider this consider a seventeen thousand dollar investment that's going to save salt, right? Uh, but you can have a return on investment argument that if you can reduce this purchase order purchase order to seventy four thousand, you've made back all your money. Not directly because there's a huge price drop, but you could you exactly say that, that's what I'm getting at. So, not, they're not, not directly related. The numbers right. are the same, but they're different reasons. He's using less salt plus as a price drop is two good things that don't normally happen. And how many ton you got up here now, Mark? Uh, should three quarters full? Three quarters full. I don't know how many ton that is, but no, you can you can, you can pick whatever number. This, this is how much, for how much do you need? Where, when do you want to see Mark again if we have a bad winter? Because he'll be back asking for some of the 92. And the price not right, uh, might not be yeah. the same. If you, right. Yeah, it usually goes up. So because this this, this renews it at 25%. It's automatically we know it's going to be 20% because of the price reduction. With with the brine? With the brine and the and the computers that we installed on these trucks. How many tons do you use a winter? What? I used to use like 1,800 tons. I know. Well, I think we estimate 13 or 14, maybe. 1,400 tons. 1,400 tons. I think we put in for, it's variable because sometimes we're able to get, you know, if you look at expenses only, we're able to get that last load in there when we didn't need it, but it starts us off the next year. So we, that's kind of where we are now. We have three quarters of a winter shed that's been sitting in the summer. Yeah. Ah. Right. <coughs> yeah, bring it down. I like to bring it down 20%. And that still give you a buffer on, on what you're going to be saving on your brain and your computers. What's the number? 
maximum to spend before well, it comes back to you is 75? Yeah. Let me ask with the computers. Are you trying to reduce it 20% every year? Because no, you just no, sort no, of exit. No, okay. No, one time. Yeah, okay. But we don't, he's already taken that. I know it's about 20% of the computer. That's the first time I ever heard 20%. No, my, but You're just going after the price range. Right? No, they, they, they told us, didn't they? I remember. Yes, you know. Well, I'm just saying. I mean, there was a, no, there I'm was having Kenny days is before me. No, the, no, no, because no. Kenny wouldn't have the computer in the truck. No. Kenny most certainly had the computer in the truck. After the last year he did. That the was last Kenny year. put that one in. No. Now, there was a discussion about reduction of winter salt because of the improved yeah. ways we're managing the salt program. The only question tonight is if you if you say 75000 as purchaser, that's all Mark needs to know. Yep. And he's going to do the best he can to keep it under that. And then yeah. if in April 1st, and we're looking at Yeah, if he needs more, he needs it. Oh, yeah. okay. I think it's a, good, it's a good number to have, Dave, to have that kind of a goal. Because if yeah. you do that multiple years, and Mark, in the operation of the salt program basically gets to 75 then we don't need to be at 92 in the budget either yeah, that's right. two different questions yeah. so we're still trying this thing out yeah. you know, the whole new system is it was like it was three winters ago three years ago uh, who knows yeah happened. that's exactly who knows warm all winter and not get any ice yeah. no i like that plan but we need okay. a motion on 202101 dash okay so you need a I'm motion 70, for the number. Yeah, I make a motion that we reduce the purchase order for salt for this year to $75,000. Second, 2021. Okay, need any more discussion about it? All right, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Now, do we want to do a quick executive session to talk about? I think it would be a good idea. Okay, let's see. Ron, see if, if folks have any comment and tell them we need about a 10-minute yes, executive session here for something quick, let's and check. then we'll be yeah. back. Um, yeah, Mike and I didn't practice this, but okay. let's see. I'm going to unmute. There's caller number three is the only one on. I don't Whoever's on the phone, can you say hello? Caller three. I don't know that one. Maybe that's Mike too. Anyway. Okay. Sounds like we're okay. So I, I need. So. All right. So I need a motion to go into executive session. So move. Looking for. Second. Uh, okay. All in favor. All right. I don't even think we have to do that. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Anybody opposed? Okay. We're in executive session. Okay. That's. Yeah. Anybody opposed? Aye. Okay, we're good. There. Let me yeah, see. Yes. Diesel fuel. Yeah, right on, right here. I'm on the diesel fuel. The next we have the uh, it, uh, the purchase order for the uh, for the diesel fuel. Get the calculator out there. Yeah, for fifty five thousand oh, dollars. Save God damn money this town. I won't do a thing. I'm done. You know, we know that's not true. <laughs> Which is good. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, then you and you did save us money with this. This is the bulk order. It's oh, how many gallons? It's um, ten. Seems three. like a lot of diesel fuel. That's the same same thing. Prices are way down this year. Uh, yes, fuel usage are, probably yes. didn't go down, but prices are down. No. Prices. Well, like my question: Has anybody checked the price over last year? Yeah, it's about. It's almost a dollar less. Okay, so why do they need the same amount? Of fuel? No, it's you, not well, the you're same missing thing. the point. The, the reason the purchase order comes in, right, to mm -hmm. for you is a bulk purchase order so that Mark can buy multiple times 
under the budgeted amount. Doesn't mean he's going to spend it all. Right. This so is what you're to... doing by adjusting the purchase order is putting a little constraint on him that says we are only approving 75 or 80 percent of the budget for you to use. When you get to that max, you have to come back. Yeah, I understand that, but, but you shouldn't be looking at the price of the fuel. You should be looking at how many gallons they use. Then, then put that against the price. Right. Uh, well, that's how the budget's done. So if the budget's done at whatever, 55,000, and we have a 40% reduction in cost now, mm -hmm. you could reduce the 55 by 40% because mm -hmm. the mileage is already in the budget amount. Right. The, and that was on the old per gallon. Yeah. So if you get to this point in the fiscal year and it's six or eight months later and the oil price drops by a dollar, you certainly can cut that authorized purchase order in half. Right. Get that just yeah. a different way around. Yeah, so it's the same. It's the same idea. Yeah. But right now, the, the reason it starts there is because that's what's in the budget, and typically we're up against the budget every year. These two things that came up tonight are very unusual. So, yeah. how many yeah. gallons did they use last year? Well, you, you have to. Well, let's take the, the total, total amount divided, divided by the gallon. Divided by two point three, probably. You know, fifty-five thousand divided by two point three, and now it's one point three. So that price difference is a dollar less. So that's forty percent less on fuel, right? Fifty, sixty, you know. Yeah. You do some math. But it's still your best guess because yeah, the price is going to fluctuate. <laughs> so right. what, what are we paying per gallon? One thirty three was no, one thirty three. One forty three. One forty three came in this uh, right. about a month ago. Yeah. Like two weeks ago, it was recent. So months, it we, only, we only buy a do we buy two months at a time around eight, eight to nine thousand gallons? And that usually lasts close to three months. That on road or off road, it's just not taxed, right? Off we don't have to pay tax, it's tax so it's clear. Yeah. Okay, that's why. Well, you pay it and then you get it back, right? Yeah, oh, some of it. <clears throat> they, okay. they mess around with that all the time. We buy off road, right? You should be buying red, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. If you had, to, if you wanted to be just, you know, have have a good relationship, you knock that fifty five by forty percent, and price could go up next week. But at least you're recognizing today when you're approving it, you don't need fifty five. Yeah. It's not two dollars and thirty three cents a gallon. Right. In most years, we are approving the maximum that we either hit or go above. So this yeah. is just unusual yeah, discussion we're here. having because this is the first time ever since yeah, I've been it? doing this stuff where you have diesel yeah. and winter salt oh, drops. Or so the maximum how much for fuel? 55? 55. 55, right. And we've got an election coming up which can make a big impact on it too. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to make any difference. It ain't over and done yet, so work on what we got. Okay. We want you to rub it in higher, okay? <laughs> so, so, so what do you what do you do to prepare for like three boost it might or not? Uh I'll tell you exactly. It's uh so we had a, if we went uh, down to forty? Yeah, about forty percent reduction in the fifty-five. So yeah. point four times fifty-five is twenty twenty two. Yeah, twenty two. I mean if you so make it twenty five. Yeah. And you're covered. Yeah. So Lunch. if 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 we did the order did, for thirty five, I'd say thirty. Twenty five, twenty five is bumping it. Yeah. So if you go thirty, you're covered. Thirty, you're covered. Okay. Yeah, so you can go thirty thousand, yeah. and then and Mark will get that as a cap, and Allison will do the report based on what the cap is. So every yeah. invoice that comes in, she does, she does her purchase order watch or whatever you want to call it, and then yeah. when that. And you start to get close. Then right. they'll be back to amend the PO if needed. Right. Oh, we got another 10,000 gallon bank of it. Yeah, to purchase it and hang on to it. I know. Yeah, because it's cool. so cheap. <laughs> Melanie wanted to buy a 500 for our basement. I <laughs> said, <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> okay, so we now need a motion for that. So moved. Second. Got it? Okay. 30,000, right? Yep, 30,000. 30, All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay, we're good. Okay. Let me see. Now it's the 
We're back to the Gihon Valley in there. Oh, no, 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 no. Can't yeah. leave that. Don't do that. Is there a consensus on that word? You, you... No. Yeah. Yeah. Does What's anybody a... have a consensus on that? On what the word? Guyon. Guyon or Gihon? Oh, Guyon. Guyon with a G I G U I. It, it's a. It's a. It's based on a biblical name because the. In the Garden of Eden, the water that flowed out of the out of the lake was from the Guyon. So with Eden, Vermont, Guyon flowed out, and same thing from the Garden of Eden. That's why it's a biblical that, name. That is Give him a tomato. <laughs> tell, tell me what it's called when it goes into the oil. <laughs> Before it gets to the sewer. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> okay. Anyway, so what we need to for them, we need to. Uh, yes, oh. they were. Yeah. The committee was successful in getting a ten thousand eight hundred and fifty dollar yeah. grant or whatever that was. Yeah, eight hundred and thirty five. Yeah, right? that's correct. And they need uh, consent of the select board since usually how grants go is you approve the application and then we hear about it and then there's an award. So you would be accepting the award. And designating uh, probably Al Spitzer as the as the chair of the committee to sign any paperwork that's related to the grant. Um, they are putting out two requests for proposals that yeah. handed out today. Yeah. Uh, one for electrical repairs under yeah. the grant, and one for installation of heat pumps under the grant. So Roger Audet and maybe Brian Shackett are tag teaming on this project. Not anymore. Roger's back full steam, okay. and he's ready to go. You got those two. <laughs> There's someplace in the packet. That's what the proposals are, right? Is that all right? Right. I haven't read them. No. Yeah. No. But so the question that the first question is accept the grants and authorize Al to process the paperwork. Well, okay, let's have a motion for that one first. We'll okay. do this one step at a time. All right, you need a motion to accept the grant and have Al sign for him. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay, all right. Congratulations. We, we got the money. <laughs> now what? I think, it, I think it's important though that we keep moving uh, I know this is grant money, but they do need to work on that foundation, like we talked about, and get some uh, get some concept on that. Right. I, I mean, I think they know that, and they're and they're starting to they're starting to be yep. successful at at, um, at uh, getting grants too. Which is so the good. second uh, question is: They're ready to, <laughs> ready to seek contractors for the grant. And they're breaking up into two projects. One is electrical repairs, which is part of the safety inspection and the fire marshal's work. And then there's heat pumps to get heat in there for the bench season, so early spring, late fall. Yep. And Al's worked on this. I just quickly proofed it today since we wanted to get it to you tonight. And somebody on the board, which I think would be our Roger Audette, would review this stuff in detail and tell Al to get it out to the public. And then at some point they'll get bids back and be able to start doing some work on it. I'll work on contracts and the financial stuff in the end, but in the middle part, we need at least you working with Al to look at these two things yeah. and start doing your oversight. Uh, I see Fred's was up there working one day. Yeah, Fred, he need delivered it. some propane. Oh no, he was doing something that was a repair truck or something was up there. Is it, are they planning to heat this this winter? No, there's no winter heat. We're trying about just the bench season. So. Okay, no, because they're, I need to get, I, I need to get a hold of them without shutting the water off. Yeah, no, they're not going to heat it. The water has to be shut off. And this, project, this project is trying to get going for spring. Yeah, okay. But yeah, talk to Al. He knows all the details. All right. I'm going to put that separate. So this would be an uh, authorization for Roger Audet uh, to work with Al Spitzer to put this out to bid, and uh, you could go as far as hiring the low low bid, the, the money from the grant. Right. They've Obviously, if they, if they have a problem with money and it's eighty thousand dollars, they'll be back to you saying, "What do we do now? We only have ten. <laughs> but so yeah, that's the way it they, goes. If they get bids that are under the the grant award, then it, how much grant money do they get? Ten, ten thousand eight hundred and thirty-five. Ten thousand eight hundred thirty-five. Yep. 
Boy. So you shouldn't go over that. And they had some. They got a little bit of leftover. They had a little but not leftover. Much, right? So talk to hell about money. Okay. So when you're feeling good about all that stuff. Yeah. Put this out. Now they do have a deadline of October 30th. Yeah, I'll for, call him for, uh, for any contractors that are interested in listening yeah. in. So that's a really hard cool turnaround. Okay. We have had no luck getting contractors to talk to us about little jobs. They're yeah. just really busy right now. <clears throat> But they'll yeah. be winter will roll a lot long and they'll probably get start to pay attention. Okay. Not my point. I just went, okay. I'm still thinking about Eden. So that's good for Roger to continue to work with the committee directly and get the project yep. going. You, and the only time that you'd be notified is if Roger finds a money problem. Right. Okay. And and, and they'll say, We told you so. <laughs> okay, the uh, animal control officer. Uh, we had a resignation, which is one motion. If you want to take one pieces, that was uh, Diane Stoney resigned. She moved to Maine. So that's, right here. that's a Good. accept accept her. Hard hard to do that job from that distance. Yeah. So that's so, one motion to accept her resignation. Okay. How about a motion to accept Diane's resignation? So. We'll Aye. Uh, okay. <laughs> All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Abstaining? Okay. So the next. Can I move we accept uh, Mr. Ulrich as the new? Yes, he'll be promoted to right. the new person uh, to take Diane's position. And um, uh, when we met tonight, Keith and I met, and then Dave met uh, Jason Hill, who is just hired in Eden to be ACO, just hired okay. in Johnson yesterday as assistant ACO, and he's okay. trying to piece together a kind of an ACO multi-town job. Gotcha. And he's very interested, very capable here. You know, he, he, knew, he, was, he knew he was up against, and he had some experience with uh, Eden and watching what they did. So I think yep. I, told, I told Keith and Jason that if both of them were appointed tonight in those two roles, that. I would help them figure things out with equipment and all the normal stuff, and then they would have to. The main goal is we is communication. So if you call ACO issue, we really need a quick turnaround on the calls. People have been super frustrated over the last couple of years with delayed return calls, and every animal thing is an emergency. They could see a sick looking horse. It's an emergency of that person that we need to investigate. Yeah. yeah. And Keith availability is yeah, both are good. So the Keith. Keith is around town. He's a big uh, fish and game club person. Yeah, I know. He's all over there. there. Yeah. Uh, Jason said, I'm good. I don't have any other thing. I have no other commitment. You call me. I'll be there. I don't care if it's 2 o'clock in the morning. So that was his attitude today. So okay, I great. think it's a good starting point, and I'll try to you know bring them along with the ordinances and policies and stuff. But um, if, if there's a motion to uh, promote Keith and uh, – Hire basically, it's a part time on call job. Uh, Jason Hill. Then we need to talk about the hourly wage. And let's see what Diane is in at. Uh, yeah, I think we're. I think the wages were it. I'm trying to remember now. I just saw them. Uh, 1590, 16, I think, was Diane. And the others were 15, even. Okay. So it's about a dollar difference between the lead and the assistant because the lead takes all the calls and then decides no benefits, no anything, just hourly wage. We give them mileage and we send them to training. There's a training. training. Yeah. Both yeah. any training. One of them. Mentioned some about uh, the tighter test for vet, the rabies uh, inoculation. So mm -hmm. I always okay. encourage people to do that because they're putting themselves yeah. at risk. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we pay for that. But other than that, those kind of basic safety things, we don't pay for anything. So I'm thinking the recommendation is uh, we didn't adjust by hands lately, but 17 and 16 is what I was thinking. It's, it keeps you above the minimum wage. Mm -hmm. And then see how that goes, almost like a probation. And we'll do this again next fall and see how both of them are doing. 
I think I think Eden is at 17 or just under 17. Now they fall on their insurance too, don't they? If they go in and get whacked by well, the any, any, Yeah, any, any employee that's high because they're part time and heavily on call, they're right. covered by all our medical and workers' comp and unemployment. You know, they pay all the normal stuff, which is they don't have the health benefit piece. So they would be under the state care or spouse's care or whatever they do for that. So those would be the two. Yep. Suggestion 17 and 16 for the two different roles, and then to revisit with them in a, you know six months or a year and see how it's going. I like to bring them into a regular meeting without masks and everything. But yeah, yeah, just to talk to them and see how it's. So that's the motion anyway. Okay. Got a motion here? Go accept. So accept these two. What is that? Sixteen or seventeen? Sixteen or seventeen. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we're gonna go sixteen fifty. <laughs> <laughs> I think the dollar 16, difference. Sixteen seventy five. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they, you know, I think it's fair to have, have two new people in a new position. If they're if going really well, then the town, everybody's really yeah. happy. We can revisit that. I think. Yes. Yeah. Okay. There's money in the budget for uh, some flexibility there. Okay, we got the motion. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay, we're back in that animal control officers. Yeah, uh, less of a burden for me and you, by the way. <laughs> we're, we're next in line, along with the sheriff. Along with the sheriff. The That's sheriff right. is the backup to not having ACO. Um. Okay, the 2022 municipal budget work schedule and updates on the town insurance valuations yeah so we had a couple problems with insurance not problems financial issues with, with insurance so <laughs> every once in a while vlct visits every town on a cycle and they reassess all the properties that the town is owning in insurance okay so we had some out of whack undervalued properties and They've adjusted the assessment for next year, which is about an eight percent increase in the premium. How so much? Eight. Eight percent. So normally that insurance goes up by three or four percent anyway, but this is a, this is purely related to the it's assessment a, change. Yeah. Okay. So how value how accurate is that uh, assessment? Well, I think it's accurate for their group. So whatever they use the same company to assess every building in Vermont under the same formula. Does we don't do it ourselves. This is an insurance estimate for their purposes, not retail or you know town assessors. <clears throat> the town assessors have a different number. If we listed the Grange Hall, it would be a different number. This is for insurance purposes, so they they're consistent within their group, okay. which is all the municipalities. So I don't feel like we need to challenge it, but we do make do need to make some decisions on the level of insurance. So there's different value. There's three or Three or four different ways that the town could be insured for a building. One is agreed upon value. One is guaranteed replacement value. One, one is historical value. One is um, just, there's there's a whole list of them, but each one of them has a higher premium rate. So, sure. so the the best one, which is guaranteed replacement cost, if this building burns, we get a brand new building in its size, height, dimensions, yeah. facilities, without regard for depreciation. Mm -hmm. So we get a brand new building. And that's generally the one that I think the taxpayers would expect the insurance to pay for. I would think so, right. If we don't get guaranteed replacement cost, then we end up with you know a bonding question to right. get where we want to be. Right. And you might want to do uh, a lesser value for like the salt shed. You know, if, if that thing burnt down or blew over in a storm, maybe you do want to mess around with a twenty thousand dollar building and not pay guaranteed replacement by that. So that, that's a, does that cover any inside stuff? Or just, no, well, there's contents. This is only the building. We have, the contents are our best guess. You know, how much is, how much we've put in it. We won't, the TV is part of the contents. You know, that's not covered by this. Is it deductible on it? Everything's a thousand dollars, give me claim. So I, I guess, I don't know how, and I've been looking at this enough, but I just don't know how to make the judgment calls for everybody in Hyde Park without almost presenting it to you somehow and say, here's your different choices. It's easier if you just say guaranteed replacement cost, we pay the premium and we move on. What have we done in the past? 
Uh, it's mixed, of course. So the agreed upon value is done for like um, uh, the Grange Hall. So agreed upon value for the Grange Hall, and this is this is one of the main issues we have. We had listed that when the town took it over at two hundred and sixty thousand dollars, and we've been paying on that value. The insurance value that we just got is close to six hundred thousand. Yeah. Because of the historical part of it? No, just to build that site. Just to build it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 See what I mean? So we were undervalued. Right. So the insurance company writes me and says, okay, we got a discrepancy here, but you're not really using that building all that much. You're not putting a ton of money into it. It's not one of your critical facilities. So why don't you keep it at the 250 and and save yourself some premium? But now we're not doing that anymore. We're starting to put money into it. You know, so you have those kind of policy questions about where you want to be if it's a total loss. And, I, and I'm thinking that the, that if the premium costs are 10% more for GRC, which is your best your best one, right? That the public would probably say pay that because their option is to get 250 on a $600,000 building and take out a $350,000 loan for 20 years to put back that building. I, I'd say go with the uh, full replacement. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Maybe you saying, right? should come tomorrow. Lumber is this 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 oh, that is, is that a thirty percent increase. I know. Right. And it's these crazy. Numbers are so yeah. high that that's why we had that eight percent overall increase right. because they're they're doing the right, right thing. They're, yeah. they're they're getting us to where they need to be on their side. Right. They're yeah. also showing us that if you don't have that GRC, then the taxpayers are left holding the bag on the difference. Yeah. Right. Or yeah. we get rid of the building and take it off our concern. I I don't think that's where we're at with some of the any of our buildings. We only have that many, but. So can you get a higher, can you do a higher uh, deductible? I, yeah, I think you go five, but I can. Yeah, I, was just, I think I How did, much of a difference did, would that make? I did, uh, we went from, I think it was a thousand to five on, oh, the field days on the buildings. Yeah. Made quite a bit of difference. But I can, I can do that for the next, because this is for, yeah, okay, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's that's a good idea. Don't get yeah. too very far today, yeah. I mean, but I can show right. you the GRC. So we can come up with that. That would be that. New assessment, yeah. every building yeah. some GRC and the 5,000 or whatever the deductible options yeah. are, and then give you kind of like a number over the current budget because that 8% is going to happen anyway. Right. But you right. can modify it by what you, yeah, yeah. Value yeah. yeah. no, that's a good idea. Yeah, okay. I think I'd say, I don't know, that fifteen hundred dollars. But there are choices to make. Right. That's why yeah. I, I, I couldn't yeah. just re up with it, it on my own. Gotcha. Like, there's, there's too many yep. variables here to to know what people want to do. Okay. So that's that on insurance. The overall budget I looked at uh, revenues just quickly today, just to make sure the budget process is starting now. Fire and library are coming in November. You know, town fire. You all are meeting up at the. Oh God, right North High Park Fire Station on November 2nd uh, with hopefully the Eden Select Board. Got to get confirmation from them. If, you, if you're all still into November 2nd, which is a Monday. Uh, That's what I had then. Mark and Brian have the highway budget. And I, that, whatever you're going to do with that, that will have to should be done in November for first draft to bring to the board. So okay. either the 2nd or the 16th would work. Okay. And, uh, just to let other board members see where you're at. Uh, Kim and I haven't had a chance to work on town administration, but there's nothing burning in there. The IT costs are are getting up there for security and web security and all that stuff. So that's probably one of the drivers in our, in our little budget is actually the IT issues. Uh, just keeping up with the, the cyber security and trying to get our systems where they are, are in good condition. On the revenue side, uh, I, need, I need some input because over the last couple of years, we've taken some money from the general fund unassigned or surplus money that we have each year, and we've been offsetting the tax rate by 40000 or 30000 each year. Yeah. On the first look at the revenue, I've made that zero. Because I think you should start at zero when you look at yeah, your first revenue side. Right. And I, and that almost equal because we have a lot of ups and downs. We have some increases in some grants and some non-property tax revenues uh, from the state of Vermont for like pilot program for state properties. So there's been up, up and downs. One of the biggest downs is actually the delinquent tax policy that y'all put in place is finally coming around 
through its three or four year cycle that it's actually working to keep your delinquent tax interest earned and delinquent tax penalties super low. So you actually are losing, if you want to call it losing, your right. revenue for what used to be a higher delinquency. Right. People are paying their taxes on time. Right? Yeah, so that's okay. I don't mind losing that money. Yeah, so that's kind of lost. But overall, anyway, we're in that thirty to forty thousand dollar reduced revenue side. So automatically, you're starting your next year budget at minus about a penny already. In other words, you'd have to raise a penny on the tax rate. If everybody can come in on the expense side and do the zero to three percent, I think we're going to see a little bit more growth in the grand list because of the number of permits I've been processing, which is more this year than the last three or four years. How many you done this year? I think I'm at seventy something. So the number of houses is six or seven or eight, which is a, a, little, a little bit better than prior yeah. years because we've been in the six or under for three or four years now. Even with that, the, the, the grand list it has increased by about a percent and a half, which is getting yeah. it off the zero that we were at for three or four years. Yeah. So if we, could, if we could keep that flow of even one or 2%, that one penny loss on revenue and keeping okay. people in that yeah. zero to three percent on the yeah. i think we'll be okay, we'll be okay. Again. Yeah. but it's early I, yeah. I, I don't see any red flags that we're gonna have yeah. to make a big cut the issue on the expense side is we're deficient in the capital reserves and the, the depreciation stuff that we talked about with the fire department we're yeah. not at our goals for what we should be putting away every year for the replacement of, of yeah. capital right and that's a big that's a bigger nut we've been Moving that way over the last, you know, ten years or so to get those things right. up, we're you still what, you know seventy five percent of where we need to be yeah. on fire and highway and things. Yeah, need to work on that. Yeah. So anyway, I, I'm not going to. I will show the whole budget until after money. November. Okay. Print that money. <laughs> yeah. All right. I got so, one at home, right? <laughs> so the plan was the revenue side would be okay, but there's an issue. We don't have extra money. It's, it's, it's right. about a thirty to forty thousand dollar problem there. <laughs> And we'll meet with departments in November and look at a first draft and in December, a complete draft, hopefully with okay. highway included and things like that, where the big money is. What's the big item for highway? It seems so. It's, it's still capital. It's the paving line. It's the small projects line. It's the it's the it's the highway reserve is underfunded by sixty seventy thousand. Hmm. It was okay. interesting. I heard it. Uh, almost uh, what? We were just interested. I heard that somebody was getting prices on a sand screen. Yeah, that Mark's got uh, in the in the capital pledges replacement for the screen. So that is a big. That's way more than what we bought. We I think they bought a used one last time. No, they bought a new one. They did. Yeah, they bought at the same time Marshall did. Oh, right. Bought it together, Ken Harvey and Bill. Anyway, there's a lot of different options in same screens. <laughs> That's a whole other meeting discussion, probably. Uh, okay. Same screen, where out? No, we I had just, I just had somebody come along and tell them, do they? Because all it is is a screen. Oh, you, can't, you can't just replace the uh, screen, screen pattern? Oh, yeah. You can change them in different sizes. Yeah. But anyway, it's a, it's a, in the capital plan, it's a 10 year item. So it, run, it ran out this year for the capital plan, which is what Mark was following. That's why he's looking at it. Last one we had was 40 years old over Marshall. <laughs> Still running too. Had one of them Wisconsin's engines on it. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Shit. Another uh, meeting. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm gonna move. It's eight thirty. Let's um. Time. It is. How about let's do the town orders? Whoop. Press down. Town orders. There we go. I have a town order. I have a town order. Order. Uh -oh. You put enough enough in there to give us a raise. <laughs> yeah. No raise. Yeah, oh, another one. Pass that one, one down. No raise for you. Everybody else is getting <laughs> raise. What do you talk about ourselves? As many times we've been here.
and I'd like to, when we do these two to go into executive session to come up with a plan for the contract. Then it any smaller, I won't be able to read it. <laughs> you just need longer arms. Well, oh, then it gets too fuzzy. Ron, <laughs> I got a question. On the budget highway fund, how come the local 300 deal, which is a line item on there? We have to, we collect the money from the employees and then we pay the union. But, but should the expense should it? Yeah, because we take it in from their, their gross. We deduct it from their pay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we take it as, and they're actually off the top of their paycheck, we take money from them and then expense it through the normal accounts to the union. And another question, because I don't understand it, and it may, may get an alley. Yeah. On your, your, your junk, your funds, the money coming in, where is the FEMA money? Where does it show the FEMA money? Give them back the account on this. Uh, FEMA money will show in the 22 fund, not in the 20. No, but what we must have FEMA money the back year where it should show in this one. No, not yet. Going, It's gone out, but it hasn't come back yet. So in this, this is this for the year 2021? 20, 21, yeah. So then we then we have FEMA money coming in in 19? No, no, 20, FY20, which included the end of the fall of 19. Yeah. And all of this beginning of this half a year is FY20. All the money went out because of the no, Halloween flood. Because the, the federal year is October. Yeah, but. This is the only year we we got FEMA money every year for something. Uh, what FEMA money are you talking about? Well, I don't know whatever we had back in. Uh, I was talking about the October storm. Okay, which is our only FEMA active grant. Right, because that would be on next year's. Uh, we're hoping to get money. The expenses were in FY twenty, which ended June thirtieth, twenty twenty. Right. We hope to get all the revenue in by this coming June 30, 2021. But like we didn't have no we didn't have no money coming in from FEMA on from the year before the that. previous year that should go on this one, I'm saying. Not that I know about. We have a ton of grants, but the FEMA disaster money is that was the first declared disaster. Are you thinking there was another disaster other than October? Yeah, last year there was one. What the hell was that? Was that the one with the microburst come through? Or? Not the Halloween one. No, no. no, that right. the year before. The year, well, the year before. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 No, that's this one. Thompson Hill, that was this one. This yeah. year, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's October 19th. Thompson Hill is up in... Um... What about uh, making ac this accessible to review uh, earlier before the meeting? Yeah, so the information the board needs for the meeting can be produced any time. So if you say... Three business days prior. Yeah, give me an example. So we have meetings on Monday. Comes up Gen Friday afternoon. Yeah, generally speaking, you could post, sort of close. Close on Wednesday or Thursday. Yeah. And then have the, all the reports and orders ready on Friday. Yep. And then you'd go on to the town finance page over the weekend and browse. You'd yep. see invoices, you'd see the orders that you need to see, and all that stuff. Yeah. So that, and I think part of the iPad mission, which is what Roger just said, yep. he's trying to look at the report that's printed tiny. Yeah. 
if you have his iPad, you, you can, can blow it up and you can make it bigger so you can read it easier. Which I do it I do on my own computer, sure. never mind that. Yep. This one away. So I'll I'll relay that to Mr. Saul for you. Okay. <clears throat> you know through this COVID stuff that they it's acceptable for Allie sends it to me and I say yes it's okay and then you know she signs it so when I came in to get to sit down to get this set up she had a stack of paper like this she said I know they said it's okay but I'd feel a lot better if you signed them all <laughs> well. I said I, I can appreciate that I, she was sitting up I sat here and signed the papers she says okay that just makes me feel better I said okay all right Yeah, with uh, Michael uh, Angela Ross is drawing the pizza. So, no closing yet for you. Yeah, I know, but I need to know what. You need that money that bad? <laughs> no, but I ain't going to shut him off if, if he's not up to date. Well, well, he's up to date. Once I get in November, you can't do nothing now. Well, until he promised <laughs> to keep paying you. That's all. <laughs> Yeah, but okay. I don't know. We what, have his old stuff. But I don't know what you're going to find. I know. I hear you. I, just, I can't force the free work. You know, I can't do it for free. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I guess we need a motion to accept. Oh, my son. Okay. The orders. I will motion to accept the orders. Uh, need a second. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Um, reviewing the minutes for 921, 10 5, and 10 19. <laughs> 10 19 was easy. Yeah. We met, we adjourned. Ah, okay. <laughs> I don't think I typed it. I was hoping I would. So take off the 19th. Uh, okay. Did everybody get the other ones or do you need those sent around? No. Good. I got them. They're online always, too, if you're yeah. desperate to read minutes. But no, nothing on the 19th because I get a boost the first time. Okay. Yeah, but they'll be pretty short. Uh, no, <laughs> we came, we went. Okay, so anybody so want to move those minutes? Move. And a second? Maybe they second. They sitting down there being quiet. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Let's see, are there any little odds and ends? And then I'd like to go into executive session to talk about the contract. I'm good. You're good? Good? Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's okay, so go let's, into executive session. Yes, let's go through this again. Um, 